Lagos, Nigeria's commercial city, has been experiencing torrential rainfall since the early hours of Saturday, causing severe flooding that has disrupted traffic, sweeping away vehicles and undaunted homes. Now, the downpour has also forced the Lagos state government to postpone the scheduled repair on the Third Mainland Bridge, Africa's second longest bridge. This was to begin on Sunday, 17 September 2023. A partial closure of the Third Milan Bridge had been scheduled for palliative works. However, due to the current flooding, the government has announced the planned maintenance work will now be postponed until further notice. Many streets in the metropolis have been blocked with flood waters of reaching several feet high in some areas. Traffic gridlock has built up as vehicles struggle to navigate the flooded roads. This is Satellite Town. Satellite Town Trade Fair International Market. As of today, September 16, 2023, the heavy, heavy downpour of the rain has kept all moving vehicles, including humans. Nobody could access the road anymore due to the heavy downpour. This traffic has started all the way from P9 As of when I passed there, but I think it's extending already. Everywhere is stopped up. Nobody could pass the road. Everywhere is stopped up. That's straight as you can see. Everywhere is stopped up. I'm on a PIP investment with this uh, child. Our Lagos. Sweet Lagos. See people they come from far. Meanwhile, the National Emergency Management Agency of Nigeria has issued an appeal to the residents of Lagos State, Nigeria, urging them to exercise extreme caution due to continuous rainfall. In a series of tweets made on Saturday, Nema said it is actively conducting assessments at critical locations, engaging with affected communities and offering prompt solutions to address the situation. Nema is also providing assistance to a building owner whose fence has collapsed necessitating reconstruction to stabilize the foundation and prevent it from collapsing onto the adjacent bungalow. Now, following the directive of the agency's director general, the agency also said it distributed materials such as children and women's clothing, mattresses, antiseptics and other essential supplies to provide immediate relief to approximately 200 people in Orile Agege local government area on Saturday. To speak more on this uh, development, we are joined by Ibrahim Farinloye, head NEMA Lagos uh, Territorial Office. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Welcome, sir. sir. All right. Uh, now, tell us uh, more about the relief materials given to those affected uh, by the flood lately. Well, all of them have received their materials and uh, additional supplies will be given to them, which will be food items. But uh, their houses are uh, already, uh, it may, they may return to it later this evening as uh, effort is being done to, to get the, to pump out all the trapped water in their premises here and there. Uh, a report from other parts of the state indicates only one place so far, only one person so far has been reported dead due to his uh, non-adherence to warnings by, uh, by some people around him. He was a commercial motorcycle driver. He was trying to navigate a road, and his colleagues told him not to carry out any activities today, but he, he refused to heed to the advice. So his passenger had to drop down. Unfortunately, immediately the passenger escaped. He was swept off with his own motorcycle. So, so far, so good. The intervention, relief, uh, relief intervention is ongoing. Uh, it's the first phase of non-food items, the, uh, the antiseptics to, to cleanse the room and uh, make the place habitable. The church, the church and the mosque, people are taking refuge, uh, are, almost being, are almost getting empty as uh, everything is being restored correctly. How would you say, you know, a state like Lagos State, which of course is heavily populated, is prepared for the down, you know, downpour, the torrential floods that we are seeing across some parts of the state and even the country? 
Well, uh, when you talk uh, about uh, preparedness, I think I can give Lagos State uh, maybe 90 to 95 percent uh, rating. But you know, the Lagos State is not a Lagos State of its own. Right, we are still trying to connect with Ibrahim, but uh, be rest assured that uh, in the course of the bulletin, once we are able to... Okay, I understand this back. Ibrahim, uh, we lost, uh, of course, communication at some point. Would you like to pick up from where you stopped? Uh, the state is prepared. Uh, at least 90% preparedness was done. We started working together since March to take care of uh, any uh, odd, uh, uh, black spot. We identified about 25 all right, uh, of course, we have lost Ibrahim again, but be rest assured that once we are able to reconnect with him, uh, I mean, we will, of course, uh, do so. But still, in, in the news at this time, I understand that he's uh, back. Ibrahim, are you there? Uh, yeah, some colleagues are interjecting. Oh, okay, okay. I understand you're in the line of work. Okay, no problem. So, uh, so far, 25 people flashpoint area were identified and uh, uh, both NEMA and other federal agencies with the state authorities we've been working together and uh, the director general with the, and the governor of the state have uh, been talking and uh, all the uh, we don't have any cause to fear you know when uh, we don't know the quantum of what will happen but because of the preparedness and the state of uh, uh, mitigation actions taking take, uh, that have taken place the impact on human life will not be so much disrupted. It's just temporary. By now, uh, almost everywhere is dried up because it's flash flooding. And you know, flash flooding will only disrupt life for a period of time. And we have educated the residents on when it is flash flood, don't rush out. When uh, this rain stops, uh, wait for 30 to one hour before you start your activities. That's what has helped us to minimize cause of death or any loss of property so far. All right, now let's talk about uh, the fact that, I mean, this is not the first time Nigeria would experience uh, uh, flash floods, you know, or flooding generally as it were. And also, you know, unfortunately, there's usually casualty with it. People losing property, some losing their lives. But what would you say is the reason why we constantly, you know, have floods, particularly in some peculiar areas? Uh, is it as a result of uh, poor infrastructure, the habits of certain people, or that uh, in terms of enlightenment, you know, maybe from your agency, you know, it's not enough, you know, to let people know, okay, this and this is what you're meant to do in situations like this. What do you think, you know, is the cause, the root cause of these uh, issues almost every year? Yes, thank you. Uh, when you talk lack of enlightenment, I don't think uh, lack of uh, 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 enlightenment is part of it. Uh, awareness creation and sensitization has been on. If not for awareness and sensitization issue, maybe more life will have been lost. Only one person lo uh, uh, lost his life because of his refusal to eat the warnings, and the warnings have been running in all media houses. So aside from that, uh, the climate change, nobody can determine what the climate we bring. But we, were, we, worked, we prepared a worst scenario to us worst scenario, and one of the signs we have seen now, one of the incidents is a case of worst scenario. We never expected it. You remember within this period, we never, uh, no prediction of heavy rainfall in the southern part for within this period to tomorrow. So, but it just came in and we, because of the preparedness we have had, it had to be min minimized. You can see that ordinary rainfall took this one, nothing like the dam failure, Nothing like it's just the tamper. So you should at least give credit to the state government and other stakeholders for their uh, preparedness. Though, when you talk of uh, infrastructure, well, infrastructure, you cannot work ahead of what you don't know. But to the best of, the, of our uh, ability, we have worked for this worst scenario we anticipated, but this uh, incident, uh, more or less like, change its own pattern. Because rainfall had not, we had not really experienced rainfall for a long time. What we had last was uh, last Friday, and then uh, that last Friday, it came heavily, and since that last Friday, nothing came. So it's like the rain is holding itself. Instead of coming on a regular basis to, this, uh, to stabilize the situation, it just decided to come 
once in a week or so. So you can see that we cannot work for what we don't know, but we, we, we should work to prevent what may happen as a worst scenario case. All right. Uh, before I let you go, uh, many, of course, uh, many houses were built or are built along a drainage parts, while some environments, uh, you know, do not have proper drainage, you know, network. Uh, how best do you think this can be addressed? And also as a follow up to that particular question, uh, what are, I mean, are there any warning signs ahead that uh, particularly Lagosians uh, should brace up for in terms of uh, the rains? Well, uh... When you talk of uh, any sign, yes, we have given it out that this uh, September, we should ex in September October we should expect excessive rainfall. Our project, our the prediction before was whether it will come daily or not, but it has been predicted that September October it will come heavily. The system, the pattern is what we don't know. So. The alignment and the uh, early warning signals have been sent, and all other uh, preparations like dam management, all of them are in place. Uh, the riverine communities are already prepared for this coming uh, incident. So, to us, uh, it's not so. Uh, it's not that it's overwhelming, but well, we are prepared for it. People are prepared for it. We only abide when it comes because of the dynamism of uh, flooding or disasters. So we will change immediately and come on board to give warnings, regular warnings, what to do and what not to do at a particular time. Fortunately, the incident, the last Friday rain what happened in the night. This one uh, happened uh, early morning, whereby school children were not uh, in school, had they been it was during the day when school children are there, it will, it will be a very dangerous thing. So, so the nature is also helping us in managing the situation. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Mr. Ibrahim Farin Loye, head Nema Lagos Territorial Office. Once again, thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome, sir.